let me catch you up if you haven't been watching. and welcome to episode four of the Northward Knitter Knitting Podcast. My name is Heather. I'm coming at you from Whitehorse in the Yukon in Northern Canada. It's been a little while since my last episode and I do apologize for that. Life got crazy. I got really busy with work. I was sent down to Nevada and Idaho twice now since the last episode. Then I was down in BC for Christmas. So I haven't had a lot of time for I've had a little bit of time for knitting, but not a lot of time for, for filming and showing you guys what I've been working on. So I think last time I talked to you guys, it was in October. I got sent to Nevada and Idaho for about a month. I got back at the end of November and then I didn't have any knitting to show you guys. I was so busy with work that I wasn't able to get a whole lot of knitting done. I didn't want to have an episode where I didn't have anything to show you guys because what fun would that be? So I came back and then I was away. I was down in BC for a couple weeks for Christmas. So I did get a little bit of knitting done then, but it was all gifts. I came back uh, at the beginning of January, I came home and then I got word that my project in, in Nevada and Idaho got bumped up. I ended up leaving mid-January to go back down to Idaho to finish up some work. I filmed episode four before I left. I did have a little bit of knitting to show you guys, but I didn't get it edited just because I got really busy with work. While I was away, I did get some knitting done. So I decided to refilm episode four for you guys. I have a lot to show you and I'm very excited about it. I just got back. I was down in Idaho for five weeks this time. So I just got back on Sunday. I have tons to show you guys. So I'm very, very excited. I am back in the Yukon for about two weeks before I take off again. If you haven't watched one of my previous episodes, um, I am a geophysicist and I work in mineral exploration. So that involves going out into the field for weeks at a time. I'm not home as much as I'd like to be. I do really enjoy my work when I get the chance to film my film for you guys. I'm back in the Yukon now and it has snowed like crazy while I was gone. I had to spend a good hour to digging out my car because there was almost almost a foot of snow on my car but yeah it's been snowing a lot while i was away tons of snow on the ground but it's getting light out and i'm so excited uh the sun still doesn't rise until about 9 a.m and that's just because we don't do daylight savings time here so we don't change our clock so usually in the winter it uh the mornings are very dark last night it was still i could still see some light by eight o'clock at night so the days are definitely getting longer and i am very very excited for that let's get into talk about some knitting um grab a beverage grab your knitting I've got uh, my new mug here, which I'll talk about more about this later, but I'm very excited about this mug. This is a Jimmy Beans Well anniversary mug. And the coffee I'm drinking is Knit Coffee Company. And this is their Knitter's Blend. It's, I think, I think it's a dark roast. It's an Italian roast. It's delicious. I did get that from Jimmy Beans Wool as well. I've got a bunch of finished objects to show you guys. I also have some works in progress. And then I do have some stash acquisition that I am very excited about that I wanted to show you guys. And I, I got some new books as well that I'm excited about. So I'll show those to you guys. Let's get into finished objects. The first finished object that I have is also what I'm wearing today. This is my Elizabeth Zimmerman raglan sweater, which I have talked about on previous episodes. I did finish it a while ago. So you're probably wondering why, why is it on finished objects again? Well, I changed the neckline. I think I talked a little bit about that in a previous episode about how the neck band, you can probably see, I have now doubled it up before it was just a, a single neckband and then I bound it off and I kind of wanted to change it. So I knit it, I undid the bind off, I knit it longer and then I folded it over and just tacked it down. I might go back and change how I bound it off and how I tacked it down. It's a little bit tight on that seam. Um, 
and it almost looks it almost looks turtlenecky. I do still really like it, but I just might change that how I how I did the bind off because I recently found on Instagram a better way to actually tack it down, but we'll see. This is knit out of Wool of the Andes from Knit Picks in the color Lake Ice Heather. I really love this yarn. It's a great affordable yarn. I think it's about $3.50 per 50 gram ball. It's a good workhorse yarn. Of course, Knit Picks has tons of colors, but yeah, that's my first finished object that it, it really didn't take me that long to change the neckband on it, but I wanted to show you guys what I did because I did talk about it before. The next finished object I have to show you guys uh, is actually multiple finished objects, but it's all the same pattern. There is a story behind this. It goes back to Christmas. Usually I knit uh, my family some gifts for Christmas. That's my main gift to everybody. And in the past I've done socks just because it was something that I had the time to do and at the time I was a student so it was actually more affordable for me to do that but now I'm short on time <laughs> as you may have guessed I don't have all the time in the world so it came down to crunch time for Christmas and I was like I need gifts for people I went to my local yarn store which is itty bitty yarn store I picked up some super bulky yarn and I decided everybody was gonna get matching hats this year I did I think five hats for Christmas presents. And it was pretty funny. The person at the at the counter at the yarn store, I was kind of telling them my plan and they were just like, um, that's a lot of knitting to do. And I think it was like, I think I had about 10 days to get it done. And I was like, I got this. And you know what? It The knitting went so fast, super bulky yarn and doing a hat. It takes me maybe a day to do one hat. So I was able to knock those out pretty fast. I got them all done. I even got an extra one done for my niece. So that was good. But when it came time to gift, so I gifted them. Um, and then we went for Christmas dinner. And one of the hats was, um, I don't want to say stolen. It was all done in a very nice place polite way but one of the hats was taken by somebody else it was all it was all okay it was it was known I obviously was gonna knit another hat to replace that one but the person that took the hat <laughs> wants more so these are my finished objects so this is the first one this is a replacement for the hat that was taken this is the Perry Beanie by Bonnie Mae Blue. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It's an excellent pattern. It's There's sizes for children all the way up to a large adult and it calls for a super bulky yarn and I can't remember the needle size, maybe an eight millimeter. I used an eight millimeter with Estelle Yarns Merino Big. It's a very cool pattern. You start with a provisional cast on and then you knit the brim, fold it over, you take out your provisional cast on, and you knit those stitches together with your live stitches so that you get a folded over brim. This one, I added extra length to make it slouchy. There are instructions on how to do that in the pattern. And then I added some real fur pom-poms. So this one, I think this is Fox. Um, so again, I got this from Itsy Bitsy Yarn Store. She sells real fur pom-poms that are made locally. So that's the first one. So that was to replace the, the first hat that was stolen. It wasn't actually stolen. But then I was also commissioned to do two more hats. So this is, again, the yarn is uh, Estelle Yarns Merino Big 8mm needle. Uh, this one I didn't do the extra length, so it's more fitted. And this is an Arctic Fox pom pom. Same pattern, so the folded up brim, just not as much length on it. This is the third one that I finished. Again, for the same person. Uh, so this one is a cream with another real fur pom pom. And then I have had a pom pom sitting in my stash for myself for the longest time and I just, I haven't knit myself a hat that I wanted to put the pom-pom on. So I did have some leftover yarn. This is the fourth hat that I finished. So this is the gray from that other gray hat. This was the leftover. I also had, this was one of the colors that I knit for Christmas present as well as the green. So I had leftovers of those two from Christmas presents, this one from that other hat, and then this was the pom-pom that I had saved for myself and that I've had for, I think I've had it for about a year now that I just haven't had a hat to put it on. Um, and I did do the extra length on this one to make it slouchy. So this is my hat. Uh, so I did do some selfish knitting. Um, 
But yeah, I think I love this hat. I was talking to my coworker when I finished it and she's like, holy cow, that looks like a commercial, commercially made hat. She's like, it looks like a Burton hat. And I'm like, dang, it's a good compliment. Um, but yeah, I love this hat. It's very, very warm. It's nice and thick and snuggly. So I finished four hats while I was gone. Um, they do, I do still have to need to block them um, before I send them away. They're getting sent down to, down to BC. Those are the hats. My next finished objects, I finished actually before I left. These are my yarn over New York socks. Ooh, there we go. So these are the socks I think I showed you guys I can't remember when I showed you guys these, but these were knit from my Yarn Over New York uh, doubled sock blank in the color iridescent. So I finally, I finally finished them. I knit, I knit a really long leg on these because I wanted to get a lot of this turquoise in it. So I did a uh, toe up, short row heel, uh, two at a time because it, I was knitting off of a sock, sock blank. So that's the easiest way to knit off a sock blank that's doubled up like that is to just, is to just do two at a time. So they are finally finished and I haven't worn them uh, because I really wanted to show you guys before I started wearing them. I had these on the needles for far too long. They're finally done. I'm excited. They're super long. I love the color gradient on these. I think I talked last time about the heel. I was gonna do a turquoise heel and just grab it from the other end and I ended up with a huge mess of yarn, so I scrapped that idea. But yeah, I think it the heel actually looks pretty good, and it didn't really interrupt the, the gradient, which I was a bit surprised. Pleasantly surprised, of course. But yeah, these are my Yarn Over New York socks that are finally done. Woohoo! Those are going in, in my sock drawer. Final finished object I have to show you guys. I don't think I showed this to you when it was in progress. That might have been the first time I filmed this episode. I finished this right before I left for Nevada. In fact, I think when I left, it was still drying from, from blocking. This is the yarn that I made from that Crux Fiber bat. I am extremely excited about this. You can see all sorts of fun little colors in there. It's thick, it's thin. I did do a two ply. I really like how this turned out. I, when I was spinning it, I didn't really have an idea of what, what kind of yarn I wanted. I just wanted to spin it because it was beautiful. I really love how it turned out. I kind of just went for it and whatever the bat wanted to be, it was gonna be, and that's what it is. So this is from Crux Fibers, which is a local dyer here in Whitehorse. And she also makes uh, spinning bats as well. And so I got this bat from, from Itsy Bitsy Yarn Store. I think it was on a whim. I was walking through the mall and I was like, oh, I'll see what spinning fiber she, she has in stock. And she had this. Um, so this is, this is called Warm Nights. It's 100 grams and it is 35% merino silk. So it's, that's 15% black and red and 20% cinnamon. It's 10% brown alpaca from Sunshine Coast, BC, 15% brown Corydale, 15% brown Yukon wool from Dawson City, and 25% white Romney from Sunshine Coast. It's a mix of all sorts of things. It's really soft and I can feel the lanolin in it and it, it just feels really gorgeous. Do I know what this is gonna be? No. I don't, but I, but I spun it and it's mine and I love it. <laughs> I think that's all I have for um, my finished objects for this episode. So in that case, uh, let's talk about works in progress. The first work in progress I have to show you guys, uh, it is living in my bicycle bag. I was working on these while I was in Idaho a little bit. I think in a previous episode I showed you guys. So this is sock number one that I'm knitting from my hand spun sock yarn. It was a sweet Georgia braid that I got quite a while ago. I think this yarn is a little bit thin for socks, but that's okay. It's uh, it's my first hand spun socks that, I, that I've actually made. Um, so that's sock number one. And then I was working on these. I cast them, I cast on the second sock while I was in Idaho. And my intention was to knit the whole second sock on my way home. So the reason 
that I wanted to knit the whole second sock on the way home is I had about 17 hours of flights and layovers. It's not easy getting to Whitehorse. <laughs> I mean, it is easy, but flying from Reno, I always have to fly through several airports. So this time I left Reno at 5.30 in the morning and I flew to Denver and I had about four and a half hour layover in Denver. And then I flew to Vancouver, BC. And then I had about four and a half hours in Vancouver before I finally flew to Whitehorse. So with all the time changes and all that, it was about 17 hours and I didn't get in until 11.30 at night. So I was like, that is a ton of knitting time. I can totally get a sock done. I didn't get it done. I didn't even get to the heel. If you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen my stories <laughs> of me trying to get it done. I made it about this far, probably almost at the heel. This is how the second sock is knitting up. So you can kind of see the color changes. I think when I was spinning this, I kind of tried to do some sort of fractal or not intentional. I just ended up doing a fractal kind of. I don't know. I'm I'm enjoying the color changes. It looks pretty cool. I just wish I got I got this one done because these have been sitting in my works in progress for so long. So I didn't get them done despite my best efforts. I, I actually got really tired while I was waiting. It was a really long day, so I got a bit tired. Um, and then I had to spend some time trying to figure out if I had to self-isolate when I was coming back to Canada. It turns out that I didn't. I got a lot of conflicting information, so I actually had to spend like an hour or so trying to trying to figure out if I had to self-isolate or not. I am fully vaccinated. I even have the booster, but uh, flying into Vancouver, I got randomly selected to do a COVID test. And so I received information where they were like, if you've been selected for a COVID test, then you have to self-isolate until you get your result. But I also received information that also said, if you're fully vaccinated, and you get selected, you don't have to isolate while you wait for your results. So I wasn't sure which one applied to me. It turns out if you've only been in the US and Canada in the past 14 days, you don't have to isolate. I did end up getting my results like the next day and I tested negative. It's a little bit of a challenge trying to figure that out. Anyways, that was a little bit of a tangent, sorry. So the next work in progress is also something that I've been working on for a little while and I I think I've probably shown you guys before. I picked this up when I got home. I was like, I, I kind of want to work on something that's not tiny little socks. So this is my neighborhood sweater. This is the back of it. So I've got quite a bit done. I'm working my way, shaping the armholes now. But yeah, I've done actually quite a bit since I've, since I've got home. I've been trying to relax as much as possible and get some knitting done. This is the Neighborhood Sweater by Erica Knight. It's from this book, uh, Texture, which I picked up, I think when I was in Vancouver in September, yes. Um, so I got this book and then I picked up this Donegal Tweed from White Coast Wools while I was in Vancouver. I think I started this in September. I'm making pretty good progress on the back and this is the first pieced sweater I've done in a while. Usually I do like a seamless, seamless sweater. This one is pieced, so yeah, we're getting there. It's gonna be a little bit oversized. I hope I have enough yarn for it. I think I do. I think I have just enough yarn for this, um, but uh, I don't know, maybe we'll do shorter sleeves or something. I don't know. Anyways, uh, that is something else I've been working on. I actually have one more work in progress. I totally forgot about this one. Back in October, I, I did an order with um, We Are Knitters, which I, I hadn't really heard about. I have heard of Wool and the Gang, and I feel like We Are Knitters is very similar. So they sell a lot of kits, and I feel like it's geared more towards beginner knitters, but I wanted to to try it out and see what kind of patterns they had, what it was like. So I put in an order for the Isolde cardigan. So it's this really long cardigan made out of cotton. I don't know why I picked a project so big, but I did. <laughs> Anyways, I've been working on that. This, this is the left front that I've been working on. It's got a bit of a, I think it's a mock, mock fisherman's rib. The only modification I've made on it so far is that this is supposed to be the right side of the fabric and 
I don't like it as much as this side, so I've been putting this on, on as the as the outside. Somehow I've already done the back. I don't know how. This thing is monstrous. It's on five millimeter needles. I've managed to do the whole back. I think this is the longest garment I've ever made. I don't know how I knit this. It was, it's plain stockinette, so it's like, it probably took me forever, and I don't know what I was doing while I was knitting it, but I got, I got the back done. <laughs> so now I am working on the left front. It's going a bit faster because there's less stitches, but basically this cardigan is you do rectangles for the back and the two fronts and then you do rectangles for the sleeves and then you sew it all together and you have a, a cardigan. Um, I might modify the sleeves so that there's a bit of tapering because they're it's just a big rectangle and I want a little bit a little bit more fittedness on the sleeves so I think I'm gonna modify it slightly that way as well. So this comes as a kit with the pattern all the yarn and it comes with knitting needles and I chose a circular knitting needle for this and within a couple rows, I actually swapped it out for my Leica needles um, just because the ones that they sent me, the join between, like they were wood, but the join between the, um, the cable and the actual wood part uh, wasn't great and it would snag on my yarn every single time I tried to push stitches on it. So I just, I opted to stop using those and I subbed in my own needles for that. The yarn I like, it was a little bit splitty because I was pulling from the center of the ball. So I switched to pulling from the outside of the ball and that seems to add a little bit more twist into the yarn as I'm knitting. So it's a little bit less splitty. But yeah, I like the yarn, it's really soft. It's the cotton from We Are Knitters. Um, and the colors, I really like the color. It's gorgeous, this salmon color. Usually I go for, lately I've been going for more neutrals, but I was like, ah, I need to branch out. So yeah, that's my, that's my We Are Knitters cotton cardigan. I think it'll be nice for summer for just lounging around the house. That was kind of my, my plan. So that's all that I have to show you guys for finished objects and works in progress. I do have some other stuff to show you guys. If you've watched previous episodes, you may know the story of the Virgin River cardigan. There, There's an update to the cardigan story. Um, so let me catch you up if you haven't been watching. The Virgin River cardigan is a cardigan from the Netflix series Virgin River. It is one of my guilty pleasure watches. It's, I would say it's like a Hallmark movie, but there's like, it's Netflix. So uh, it's not quite as squeaky clean, I guess. Anyways, we won't get into why I watch Virgin River. Um, but anyways, the newest season of Virgin River, there is this great cardigan that the main character wears. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, I want that cardigan. So I spent probably a couple hours trying to find a similar cardigan, trying to find a pattern on Ravelry, any kind of picture I could find of this cardigan so that I could either recreate it or if there was a pattern, I could make it, but I could not find it. I was talking to some friends of mine. I do have a friend in the film industry and she's like, I have a friend that, uh, was doing some editing on the show, I think, and she's like, let me show you, let me send you some pictures. So I got some stills from from the show and I was still I'm looking at it, how was it constructed? I was like, okay, I wanna recreate this cardigan. I did end up finding kind of, not really a similar pattern, but I did find a cardigan pattern and that's the Big Love cardigan, which I haven't worked on, which I, why I haven't shown you guys, um, but I have talked about it. And so I was like, okay, I'll just knit this one. It's kind of similar maybe and I'll be happy with that. And so I kind of put it to rest for a little while. And then when I was down in BC for Christmas, actually it turns out the same person that stole the hat, <laughs> she was wearing this amazing sweater. It looked, I took, I looked at the back of it and it looked, it looked like the sweater from Virgin River. And I was like, Oh my god this is this this is a very similar sweater hers was a pullover not a cardigan but the back i was like this this is the sweater so i very nicely asked her if i could take some pictures so i took some pictures of the back of this sweater and i'm like i'm gonna make this sweater it's gonna happen i got really excited about recreating this sweater so it kind of invigorated me and i was like okay now i need to get some yarn so this whole story is leading up to 
I put in a nitpicks order and it came right before I had to leave for Idaho. So I wanted to show you guys what I got. So this is the yarn that I'm going to make this sweater out of. I think I bought far too much of it because I didn't know how much I needed. I got this bulky weight wonder fluff. So it's this gorgeous light fluffy yarn. It is 70% baby alpaca, 23% nylon, and 7% merino wool. The color I got, uh, does it have a name? I think it, it's just this oatmeal color. Um, the sweater in the show is actually white, but I didn't really want a white sweater because I'd probably spill the coffee on it and stain it. Uh, so I got this oatmeal color. So this is gonna be my Virgin River cardigan whenever that happens to happen because that's i think it's going to be a lot of work i do have some ideas of how it's constructed that's a project for the future the other thing i got uh in my nitmix order as well i finally splashed out and got some high desert some high desert worsted weight yarn um so i got a bunch of 50 grams gram skeins. I've really wanted to try this yarn for a while. So this is their 100% USA grown and spun yarn. I got, there's another color in here. Oh, so the, the color of this one uh, is Hair Heather. Um, this one, which I didn't realize until I got the order, I basically ordered the exact same color. Apparently I'm on an oatmeal kick. But anyways, this color is Alder. I've wanted to try this one for a while. If you follow Bernadette of the Coffee and Craft podcast, she did a review of this yarn, I think it was last year. And ever since then, I've really wanted to try this yarn. Um, so I got a bunch of this, and I think this is gonna be a sweater for myself because I definitely have enough for, for a sweater. The other stuff I got in my Knit Picks order, I picked up this book called The Mighty Mitten. There are instructions to do a fingering weight mitten as well as a worsted weight mitten. And then it's got all sorts of different color patterns. So it's basically like the same mitten pattern, just different colors, different different color work patterns. I thought that was kind of cute. I was thinking maybe for Christmas presents for next year, I could make a bunch of cute little mittens, matching mittens. For this past Christmas, I did hats. So maybe this next Christmas, it could be mittens. And then I also got the Clean and Crafty book. This is all just dishcloth patterns and it's uh, they've actually got some really cool different dishcloth patterns. I thought that would be another cool kind of Christmas thing that I can work on throughout the year. Small projects that I could maybe take on when I'm away for work, small projects that I could just throw in my bag and then I could have dishcloths for everybody for Christmas as well. I'm thinking ahead. I'm trying to plan ahead this year. <laughs> so I'm not in a rush. The next acquisition stuff that I got, I was down in Reno. Usually when I work in the States, I fly into Reno because that's where we have a lot of our work stuff and I just go from there. I had to buy some yarn for one of the hats that I knit. I didn't have the right, kind of the right color here. So I was like, you know what? I'll find a yarn store in Reno. I'll get the yarn down there. I Googled yarn store in Reno and what popped up but Jimmy Bean's wool. <laughs> I knew Jimmy Bean's wool was from the States. I think I've ordered stuff from them in the past. It might've been a while ago, but for some reason, I always assumed they were on the East Coast. Turns out they have their brick and mortar store or their showroom. It's in Reno. <laughs> and I was like, I need to go there. And one of the things I had to do while I was in Reno was go to the DMV for work purposes. And it turns out Jimmy Bean's Wool is right next to the DMV. I stopped by there when I was there in January. I picked up some, some yarn. So I got some Malabrigo to, to do this hat. Sorry, I forgot to mention that earlier. This is Malabrigo. Uh, I can't remember what the color is actually called, but it's just this this cream color and it's a bulky yarn. So I used the same, the same needles as I did for the other hats. I also got a couple things for myself. This is their Reno Rafter 7. As you can see, it's a Jimmy Beans Wool brand yarn and it's actually their local yarn. So these Rafter 7 sheep are raised at the University of Nevada in Reno. So it's a truly local wool. It is dyed at Madeline Tosh and it is for sale exclusively at Jimmy Bean's Wool. Uh, so I got this one. This is liquid gold and this one is 
Mellow Pond, and I thought these illustrate the beautiful colors that are down in Nevada, and I've spent a lot of time down there. So I thought this would be great souvenir yarn for myself. That's what I bought for yarn, other than the yarn that I needed for the gift. And then I bought, also bought a couple books. So I did get the newest copy of Lina Magazine because I love this magazine. And if I have the opportunity to buy it from a local store rather than ordering it, I will do that. I have ordered Lina directly from them before and it was very expensive with the duties and all of that. So if I can get it in store, usually I'll, I'll buy it in store. There was also a pattern in here that I really wanted to knit. Which one was it? It's the Hutton sweater. So this sweater right here. I saw it online and I was like, ooh, that's a really cool sweater. I wanna knit that. I'm going to use my high desert yarn to knit a sweater out of here. Poco Knits. Uh, sweater workshop. So this is by Julie Weisenberger and it's her way of knitting a sweater, her method of tailoring the shoulders. So I want to try that with the high desert yarn that I got from Knit Picks. That was my visit to Jimmy Bean's Wool the first time. I was back in Reno last week for the end of the project and so I went back to Jimmy Bean's Wool because I was like, there's a couple other things that I, that I really want. I want to go visit them again. So I ended up going back there on the 19th, which just so happens to be when they had their housewarming party, which I didn't know about. So I pulled up to, to their store and I was like, why is there this huge line up outside? This is going to take forever. I had an appointment to do my COVID test that day as well. And I was like, there's no way I can get through this line and then get back for my COVID test. So I ended up driving around the block and I was like, okay, well, maybe I'll see how long the lineup is and how long it's going to take to get in there. And so I went up and I, I talked to them and I was like, hey, how long is this lineup going to take? And they're like, actually, that's just to get the swag bag. So the first 200 customers would get a swag bag. And she's like, if you just want to go in and shop, just go in. So I was like... I'm on a time crunch, I'm just gonna go in. So I went in, I happened to talk to this guy as I was walking towards the building. I was walking kind of fast, I'm a fast walker. So I passed him and so I ended up getting in and then I ran into him inside and I was like, oh, hey, you got a swag bag. And I kind of told him how I just like kind of snuck in ahead of the line because I didn't want a swag bag. We kind of like joked about it and I walked around to the next aisle and I hear this, hey, hey. And I was like, what? So he came around and he's like, hey, here you go. I hands me his swag bag and I was like, what? No, like you stood in line for this. And he's like, I'm here with my wife. We've got two, we don't need to, here you go. So he gave me a swag bag, which was so nice. So I had a lot of fun there. They opened up the warehouse so you could actually walk around the whole building and you could just shop from the warehouse. It was amazing. So I got myself a couple a couple more treats while I was there. The first one, I bought some La Bien Ami. I heard about this yarn. A year or two ago maybe everybody was going crazy over it at knit city and i was like i don't know what it is but anyways i did end up getting a skein for myself and this is their cash merino so it's 75 percent superwash merino 15 percent cashmere 10 percent nylon and i got the colorway the north because i live in the north now so i thought it was very fitting also, I really love this color. There's some really cool shades in there. There's some dark blues, but then it goes light. There's a couple speckles in there. Really gorgeous yarn. So I picked that up for myself. I also had to grab some Madeline Tosh. When I was there the first time, I actually spotted, I think it was this yarn uh, or this colorway, Lost in Trees. And I remember thinking, I, I really want that yarn, um, but I'll be back. So I did end up grabbing a skein of their Tosh DK in Lost in Trees. And then this one, uh, I think it was sitting nearby, but this is Hepburn, again, Tosh DK. And I thought they looked pretty cute together. So I was thinking of maybe doing a hat, some sort of accessory with these two colors. So I got that as well for myself. So this was the swag bag. I also, I don't have what all was in it. Um, but this is a very cool zip bag with the Kitchener stitch on it, and that's from Haiku. So it has all the instructions on how to do the Kitchener stitch on it. So I thought that was super handy. I also got this really cool No Problema 
zippy bag. It's got some cool little tassels on it. The last thing I got for myself is this. So this is, I did not need another interchangeable needle set. I saw these and I was like, these are kind of cool and I wouldn't mind reviewing them. I got the Smart Jimmy Bean Smart Sticks interchangeable set. So that's one of the needles. And this is, this is the eight, eight millimeter needle, um, but it's an interchangeable set of circular needles. And it's got one inch markings on the needle. So each of these colors is one inch. It also comes with cables and the cables also have markings on them. I don't know if you can see that. My but you can see there's markings on the cables so you can actually measure your work with your needle. I thought that that was kind of cool. I did look it up. So these needles are made by, I believe they're made by Knit Pro uh, or Knitter's Pride. They're a little bit more expensive than other interchangeable sets, but I wanted to try these out and show you guys. So I got the wooden set. I also ordered some stuff online from Jimmy Beans and I ordered a metal, just a single circular. So I did order a metal one because um, I wanted to kind of see the difference between the two. So yeah, you can measure your work, you can measure your gauge swatch, you can measure your wraps per inch to figure out what weight your yarn is. It comes with 3.5 millimeter to eight millimeter needles. It comes in this really nice carrying case and there's actually extra slots to put more needle tips in there and then it comes with a range of cable sizes i'm thinking of doing a more in-depth review of these needles so so this was the original reason why i wanted to go to jimmy beans wool is i wanted to get this bag this is a delic bag so they own jimmy beans owns delic um, but this is their roll top bag and it is definitely made for knitters so there it comes with a little safety pin on the outside with some stitch markers on it um, but it's just this roll top bag. It opens up. Uh, there's all sorts of pockets in it. Um, and then there's this little yarn cutter on the inside as well as this little piece here, which actually uh, feeds your yarn. So you can have your yarn in here and feed, the, feed your working yarn through there to kind of keep it neat and tidy. But it has lots of great pockets in it that even fit my passport. So I definitely used this when I was traveling back from Reno. I had this as my carry-on bag and it was super, super handy. It's made out of this wax canvas. I got the olive. I like how it, it does roll down so that it's it's like a nice, a nice purse size. So that is the last thing that I got from Jimmy Bean's Wool as well. I'm sorry this took so long. Um, I did get a lot from there. One of the other stash acquisitions I recently got that I am very excited to show you guys is some Olive Park Yarns. Um, Olive Park Yarns is from Manitoba here in Canada. They came out with this really cool, really cool yarn that I'm literally really cool yarn. I actually turned my notifications on because I wanted to know when they would have this yarn in their Etsy shop. While I was in Idaho, I ended up um, buying some of the yarn. So this, I bought these two skeins. This is a Superwash BFL. It's 80% BFL and it's also 20% 20, 20 mint fiber. So I got two skeins of this and I'm, it doesn't smell like mint. So I'm not sure how the mint is incorporated, but I got these two gorgeous colors. So I got winter time and then this one is gold. I'm really excited to try out this yarn. I've never heard of wool and mint fiber yarn before. So I really wanted to try these out and show you guys what that's like, but I just received them. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna make with this. Maybe a hat, I'm not sure. I'm wondering if I make something for winter here in the Yukon, if the mint is gonna make it feel cold. I don't know, so we'll see. Uh, but this was another really cool yarn that I wanted to show you guys that I actually, I did order this online from their Etsy store. 
Thank you everyone for watching this episode and thank you for your patience. I know it's been a while since my last episode. I am going to try and make this podcast more regular, but as you may know, there are no guarantees with my work, but I am gonna try my hardest. Thank you for watching this episode. If you liked this episode, please give me a like, subscribe, and also leave a comment. I love it when you guys leave comments. Let me know what you're working on. Uh, what shows are you watching? Are, are you listening to any good podcasts? I am a huge fan of podcasts, especially when I'm traveling and I'm going to be traveling more this next year. So if you have any good podcast recommendations, let me know, please. Anyways, happy knitting everybody and we'll see you in the next one.